One thing. Those of you who are uh, still struggling with um, rapid repair, uh, feel free to call us at 718-471-7300 or send us an email at cbrock, R-O-C-K, 1-4, cbrock14, at nyc.rr.com. And just send us a brief two, three sentence explanation of what your remaining issues are, your contact number, and your rapid repair number. We've, we've had a good level of success helping people out that have been struggling with, uh, with rapid repair, so feel free to uh, contact uh, us for that, and I'll put the rest of my report on the record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we do not have a farm at this time, so we're going to go past um, the minutes of January 8th and go right to the informational presentation of the Army Corps of Engineers. This is our friend Dan. Hi folks, I thought I had a couple extra minutes there to collect myself, but no minutes today. Um, I'm here tonight, uh, we also have members of uh, our emergency operation team here and our press office if you do have any questions about our emergency operations. Uh, you know, basically, I, my name is Dan Fault, and I'm with the Army Corps Engineers uh, Programs and Project Division. And uh, um, I'm here tonight to talk talk about beach replenishment and project rehabilitation. Um, it's going to take some time. We're going to you're going to see a lot of me. We're going to see a lot of you guys. This is a real positive opportunity. You know, Rockaway is not forgotten, and we're getting sand, and we're getting sand pretty soon. No more. Um, <laughs> For public speaking, the sign-in sheet is down here on the right. Okay, let's get started here. Um, first and foremost, I want to talk about, you know, it's very complex, Rockaway Beach, uh, when we're dealing with uh, the beach area, you know, we do have multiple jurisdictions, and you know, we all have to work in partnership together, and, and we have, uh, we've been working closely with Parks and uh, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Each one of these agencies has important roles to play, and they're actually, uh, we all work together, and, and none of these agencies can be left out of our planning process. Um, the, Depart the State Department of Environmental Conservation actually uh, permits our activities. It permits uh, boardwalk construction, it permits everything, and, and they're also a close partner. Uh, the City of New York Parks and Recreation, they of course are a landowner and another close partner. So all of this, you know, there's got to be constant dialogue and constant uh, partnership. And uh, that does take some time, but we are working together. This isn't business as usual. You know, Rockaway took a hit. We all took a hit. This is not going to be the standard way of operating. This is a new way of operating. And, uh, you know, I really, I really mean that when I say it. So let's talk a little bit, kind of go back and talk about beaches and uh, what they do and, storm system. I don't know if you guys can see this, it might be a little washed out there. But you know, you have a general beach, you have a berm area here. Some, some beaches have dunes, we don't really have dunes. Um, you get wave action that erodes the beach, erodes the dune area, it creates down here building sandbar. When there's a storm, sometimes it can overwash, as we know. Um, basically, you get much more accretion down at the underwater portion of the beach, and uh, that sand can be lost. I'm just kind of going through this to kind of get on the same page and just to start thinking about what a beach does. The sand acts as a sacrificial element to actually absorb wave damage, in some cases block waves and form a barrier. Um, it's, a, it's a complex process, it's, a, it's almost a living animal. Uh, it's moving constantly and shifting, it's a hard thing to pin down constantly. Let's talk Sandy Superstorm. At Rockaway, we're kill we count this as a 250 year storm. This wasn't a 100 year storm. This was something special. Um, in, in the offshore buoy, we had a wave measured at 32.5 feet, which was the largest wave ever measured in, in the harbor. Uh, Irene, pretty big, right? 26 feet. Not even close. Um, Rockaway, at, at the, 
At the worst places, it was inundated with 5.4 feet of water. So that means about here on me. Um, that was a lot of water, a lot of inundation. This is kind of a, uh, an overview. If you see in dark blue, that area flooded. The whole area. Um, looks like from this information that Breezy Point may have had a little, little deeper, 12.74 feet above, uh, basically above mean high water. Um, still 11, 10, 10 feet. It was a very bad storm. We all know that. Here's a graphic um, that talks about past storms and uh, it kind of documents the last 100 years, actually 112 years. We had events in November 1950, 1953. We had Hurricane Donna in September 1960. And probably the worst storm to hit Rockaway before here in, in at least the last 112 years was the March 1962 storm, um, which actually was a similar storm where there was a low pressure moving up and another low pressure moving from the west combined and it lasted for days. And uh, I've seen old pictures, I, they, they didn't duplicate well, but they looked eerily similar damage, uh, flooding into the boardwalk, tremendous boardwalk damage. We had March of 84, 91, 92, 2010, 2011, and then this outlier here. Now this graphic is great because it shows the tide level in blue here. It also shows the impact of changing sea level, this little crossbar here. There is about a foot, sorry, um, of increased level from, you know, changing sea level is rising. But look at this, that storm surge was ridiculously more than anything we had ever seen. And that black line right there is the New York City subway system, um, which is a good proxy of showing when a storm is really bad. Um, and Sandy was definitely an outlier. So, significant storms. We just talked about it. Don't get caught up in those abbreviations. Datums are, they're all measured a little differently. It, it gets really confusing. But again, we had Hurricane Donna, the storm of March storm of 62, Halloween storm, Irene. And uh, Irene was a pretty big storm. We came very close to having the, uh, the water come over the boardwalk and over the beach burn. It, it was a game of inches. We got lucky. We got kind of trapped in, in, in thinking of these storms as not being as dangerous as they were. So, what happened in the 60s? Well, Congress got to work and they authorized a huge project, a hurricane barrier with navigation gates across Jamaica Bay and entrance, believe it or not. 1.8 miles of levees and dikes, 7.7 .7 miles of flood wall. They wanted to put a flood wall 18 feet above sea level in front of the boardwalk and run it all the way down across the beach. Um, also, as an addition, they put 4 million cubic yards of beach sand. So this basically was a, a monstrous, ah, that slide's not very good, but the gate would go across the Gil Hodges Bridge, they would build levees and dikes up in Garrison, um, they would cut off Breezy Point, unfortunately, run the boardwalk, run a flood wall all the way across here, and then tie in there. They had in inside pumps. Now, this actually would protect all the interior, broad channel, um, Power Beach, so it actually would be very effective. But you know what this would cost in 1965? $50 million in 1965 dollars. So I'm not quite sure what that is in today's dollars, but that was an heck of a lot back then. Um, so you know how this story goes. Nothing happened for a while. 1974, they authorized just the beach portion of it and 10 years of renourishment. Um, and they moved forward with that. And it was authorized. By beach, from Beach 19th Street to Beach 149th, to place Beach Hill. And every other element of that, the expensive elements, the more protective hurricane portions of the elements, were actually deauthorized by Congress. And this project was built, you guys know this better than me, uh, 75, 75 through 77. Here's a picture of probably about, uh, what is that, 110th, 108th of the, uh, the beach. Here's the old boardwalk. Before and after 1975. You can't really see this, but this is a, there's a pipe running along there, and uh, those are actually people out on the beach enjoying, despite the fact that there is construction work going on. That's remember that as we get farther along. Here. Okay, so what's happened through the years? A lot of sand has been placed in Rockaway, but in 1979 they built the groin at 149th. I'll bet you guys didn't realize that the Corps hasn't built other than the jetties at the end of uh, at the inlets. We didn't build any of these groins. We didn't build any of the sticks. 
We didn't build the growing field in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Those were all built by state, local entities, and uh, we basically didn't, didn't design or build them. And, uh, but they're there. Um, 1988, we did, by 1988, we had done five cycles of renourishment. So keep in mind, this is a sacrificial element of sand. It's placed in Rockaway Beach quite constantly. And beaches around this part of the country, when they don't have sand coming down from you know, good supplies of sand moving along shore littoral drift, you're getting, you're losing sand. And the same thing happens in New Jersey, the sand, the drift goes toward the Hudson River, the sand goes out into the harbor, and the beaches get smaller and smaller. It's a constant problem, it's a maintenance issue. Um, 1993, they were able to do three more renourishments, but Congress, when they did this 93, Authorization. They said, you know what, this costs a heck of a lot of money. Let's think about something that, that we can do to make it cheaper. So let's talk how much sand has been placed in Rockaway in the last century. 32 million cubic yards of sand has been placed. Um, too many of us know how big those dumpsters are, the construction dumpsters in the front that you see in the streets. Those are 30 yards. So think of what, how many dumpsters it would take to be 31 million cubic yards. It's tons and tons and tons of sand. But it looks like most of the sand was placed through the 20s and 30s. That's what periods of land development, places were built in Back Bay, areas were filled and, and uh, extended. There were some storm fills in the 50s and 60s, but in the authorized state project, in the authorized federal project, I'm sorry, from 1975 we placed 20 million cubic yards of sand. So I'm just trying to kind of build a history here and understand what's, what's going on in the area. We're losing a lot of sand. You did see, I'm sure you guys witnessed some of the smaller re-nourishment projects where we did, we're dredging the inlets and sand was available. Those happened in 09, 2010, 2012. Each of those was less than 300,000 cubic yards of sand. So the reformulation study. Probably not a very popular topic right now. But that, that study was initiated in 2003. Quite honestly, federal funding was not available to complete that study. It was about 75% done, needed a million dollars. The federal budget, the federal money wasn't there for the last few years, and the study wasn't finished. Um, but the study itself was actually intended to address this rapid erosion rate, um, see what kind of measures we could do to slow the movement of sand. Um, and, and that's, that's what that study was intended to, uh, to solve and actually construct. So where are we here? This, this slide here depicts um, what we've been working on. We actually did some post-Sandy LIDAR aircraft flights. It's basically uh, radar with lasers and they, uh, they beam the beach to get a picture, a picture of the post-Sandy beach. And what they figured out was that Sandy Storm removed 1.5 million cubic yards of sand from beach 16th to beach 1.